for tapes of end time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday evening, May the 25th, 1990. Memorial Weekend Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Jack Harris is the speaker of the evening. This is one of two of the uh, Friday evening service. All right. <laughs> yeah, these things kind of fight me back. I got a mean voice. I'm not really that tough. I just look that way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Let me say in the opening statement here that my remarks will be intended to commend the remarks that have already been made. If otherwise, at any time it sounds otherwise, it is purely incidental. <laughs> and I'm right, and they were wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> If anybody, you know, I'm a real congenial man, I don't require that you believe everything that I believe just the way that I believe it. If you will not require me to believe everything you believe just the way that you believe it. If you persist to differ with me, I give you the privilege of being wrong. Yeah. Now, that's <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Ah, yeah, uh, yes. Yes, the Lord is great, and this is a great people. Solomon said, I, I don't even know how to go out and come in before this great people that you've set me over. He, he begged for the wisdom of God, and uh, it is a great people. I don't believe since we've been here, this is unusual to get this far without asking who all's here for the first time to Lake Hamilton. Uh, Look at there. Always. We, uh, we've, seen the, uh, we've seen it packed out with uh, the walls rolled back, and, uh, and we've seen it from this as one of the smaller groups on account of the, you know, the incidents or the happenings. But always, when we ask that question, uh, it, it seems that it'll be about at least a quarter, maybe a third, that are here for the first time. I think, boy, what a, what a great ministry to go forth from here. And uh, these people go back to all oh, to many states with, uh, with a new anointing and, uh, and having learned something, having been enlightened by being here. Praise the Lord. The Lord would speak to you tonight and say that you are a chosen people, Yea, and I shall gather you together and squeeze you unto my bosom, saith the Lord. Yea, that you may be nourished, and then I'll set you at my feet, and I'll teach you the way to Zion, and I'll teach you the ways of the Lord. Yea, and I shall teach you and show you things to come. Yea, for you shall no longer dwell in a partial darkness, Yea, but you shall dwell in the brilliance of the Shekinah glory of the Lord. Yea, uh, because my people's minds have been dull, yea, I have uh, withheld revelation uh, from them. Yea, but as your mind is enlightened, I shall begin to unveil my life and myself in you, saith the Lord. Yea, for it is a day of revelation. The day of enlightening, yea, I shall reveal uh, my being. For know that over the dispensations of time, in each dispensation, I, the Lord, have dispensed a portion of my life into humanity, saith the Lord. Yea, and now you come uh, almost to the fullness 
uh, of the dispensations. Now, I can assure you this, uh, that when you have reached the fullness of the dispensations, I will have dispensed my life in its entirety into you. Yea, and you shall stand in my likeness and in the fullness of my statue, saith the Lord. Yea, you shall no longer guess, but you shall be sure. You shall no longer think, but you shall know. Uh, for the Lord of glory shall touch your lips. He shall touch your eyes, and he shall touch your ears. Yea, and you shall uh, judge no longer by the seeing of the eye or the hearing of the ear, but with righteous judgment, uh, yea, ye shall go forth. Yea, and many shall come unto thee, saying, uh, Show us the way to Zion. Teach us the ways of the Lord. We have heard of the great things that God has done in your midst. Yea, uh, and we want to become one of you. Uh, we want to, we want to be a partaker of this good thing uh, that the Lord is doing in the earth. For the Lord of glory shall move on thee uh, in a very conspicuous way. Yea, uh, and even your enemies shall know that you are a, a chosen out, a peculiar, yea, and a royal people that the Lord hath laid his hand on, saith the Lord. Yea, I am not playing with you, no, neither am I teasing thee, saith the Lord, but I speak the truth because I am the truth. Yea, I shall lead thee from glory to glory, from strength to strength and faith to faith. Yea, I shall guide and direct thee uh, and lead thee into all safety. I shall protect thee from all evil. I shall keep thee in the palm of my hand, saith the Lord. Yea, and I tell you this, uh, that there is not a power in earth, under earth, or above earth, uh, yea, uh, that is able to pluck you out of my hand. Yea, you are secure with me, saith the Lord. Yea, therefore, uh, just cuddle up a little closer, yea, uh, and, and let me draw you into a tight circle, uh, spiritually speaking, that is, yea, and I shall speak to thee secrets uh, that are as yet un known, uh, saith the Lord. Know that kings, yea, and even uh, the angelic beings have desired uh, to look into that uh, that you will behold tonight. I tell you now uh, that if you will give me your attention this night, deep will call to deep, and you will know that you have been touched by the Almighty. You will hear voices, uh, yea, that some among you will not hear. You will feel urges that some among you will not feel. Uh, yea, but be not alarmed. Don't be surprised. Uh, it is the Lord uh, that is speaking to you. Yea, uh, and it is the Lord uh, that is getting your attention. And it is the Lord uh, that, uh, that expects to lead you in that you may find green pastures. Yea, uh, that will satisfy your soul. Yea, uh, tell me thou, said the Shulamite, whom my soul loveth. Where dost thou uh, pitch your tent, and where do you feed uh, your flock at noonday? For why should I be as one of those uh, that tend and feast with the uh, flocks that are nearby? Yea, I must come into the presence of the Almighty. I must be one of those people uh, to whom it has happened, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with singing, uh, and our tongues uh, with singing. Then said they among us, uh, among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. He that soweth in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. 
saying, Let us break his bands from us. Let us cast his cords asunder. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. He shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king in my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt rule them with a rod of iron, dash them in pieces as a potter's vessel. Hear ye kings, and be wise, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling, kiss the Son, lest he be angry with you, and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that do put their trust in thee. Lord, how art they increased that trouble me? Many there be that rise up against me. Many there be that say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. But thou, Lord, art my shield and my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept, and I waked, for the Lord sustained me. I won't be afraid now if ten thousand people gather themselves together against me. Rise up, my Lord, and save me, my God. Thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth to thee, and thy blessings are upon all of thy people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And as the political system sets itself against the church of the living God and imagines <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Imagine to take away our tax exemption. <laughs> Imagine to uh, to shut down our buying power. Imagine that they oh they'll cast their cords from us and it's too late. He's already set his king in his holy hill of Zion. It's already settled. Hallelujah. Amen. They waited too long. God had already set his king in his holy hill of Zion. I'll tell you, before he uh, told Moses to order the elders to take a lamb from the flocks, God had already set his king in his holy hill of Zion. Hallelujah. God had already, in the foreknowledge of God, God had already brought him uh, to Calvary and beyond Calvary and had placed him as king, king of kings and lord of lords. And everything revolves around that. It's too late. They can't change it now. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, we're just, well, what are we doing? Well, we're just walking it out in shoe leather. Hallelujah. God has given it to us uh, in a preview a picture, but now he is allowing us to walk it out. Now, I'll share some scriptures with you. Uh, I'll read these. I, I could I could quote them, but it looks like I'm showing out, so I put on these glasses that I can't see through. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, uh, and read them. Uh, in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, uh, verse 51, and verse 51, and perhaps we'll read further, uh, the title to this uh, lesson is God Raising Up Deliverers and Judges. Deliverers, now we know that God raises up deliverers, but these deliverers are judges. There are a lot of deliverers, and there are a lot of categories. Let me tell you this, that we could, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. If, unless something changes, you know what we will be doing 20 years from now? Pretty much like we're doing now. Well, uh, somebody will. <laughs> some, some of us may be over the hill. <laughs> ah, well, they're going to be with the Lord. But, but you know what we'll be doing 50 years from now? Pretty much the same. It'll change. You, you'll be talking about 
the old days, like we are talking about the old days, like Brother Trotter has given us a rendition of the old. I, I came up through that old school. Boy, uh, I was cutting my teeth, but perhaps just maybe a little ahead of him uh, on the uh, same kind of old pews. I, I, I came through the whole works. But it, 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 it's, a, it's amazing that I've been able to make the transitions <laughs> that God has brought me through. You, I am a come out of the come outers. Hallelujah. Amen. I have never been kicked out of anything. But I'll come out of anything that tries to bind uh, the moving of God's Spirit. You get too programized, uh, and, and I can't fight it. That's what you, I hardly ever do notes, because I can't follow notes. Goodness gracious, I tune it. Oh, my Lord. Uh, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. See, ours is a, is a, it's a perilous life, isn't it? We belong to a kingdom that is in another kingdom. I don't belong to this world. I belong to the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God uh, is in this cosmos, this, the, the way of things. And, and I kindly confess to you that I kindly like the cosmos, <laughs> but I love the kingdom of God. And I can tell you where you are right now without fear of being uh, corrected uh, sincerely. You might want to argue with me, uh, but if you'll think it over before you begin your argument, uh, you'll just agree with me. I know what you'd like to do. You are in a kingdom that is in another kingdom, and you are demanded to give your full allegiance to the kingdom of God. But the world wants your full allegiance. Now, what you would like to do is to get the best of both. <laughs> well, I would too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, oh, yes, sir. If you if you think you'd like to have the best of both, well, I'd like to have it more. Two hundred and oh, over two hundred and fifty pound of me here. They have a bit of it. Would like to have the best of both worlds. But but that's what I can never do, and that's what you can't ever do. David was a man after God's own heart, and he he realized that there were two citizenships. And he wanted the best of both of them, didn't he? Yeah. He wanted the best of both. You can't do it that way. Somebody is going to demand our full allegiance. So far, we've not been able to meet this demand. I tell you now, saith the Lord, that what I am demanding from the blessed sons of God, yea, uh, that shall be unveiled uh, to this generation, Yea, it's more than you can give. Yea, unless you submit your entire life to me. Yea, unless you uh, deny your every human will. Unless you can say, not vo just vocally, but with all of your heart, spirit, and being, not my will, but thy will be done. Unless you can do this, I, the Lord, am demanding more than you will be able to produce, saith the Lord. You cannot do it in yourself. Now, listen, the carnal mind, when I, uh, sometimes I, my, I'm carnal minded. I'm making a lot of confessions here because, see, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not going to claim any perfection here uh, tonight, but he's working on me, and I'm persuaded that the good work he has begun in me, he, he'll perform it unto that day. And, and, and I am a candidate for walking right into life. Don't let that disturb you. Just, uh, just try to follow me into life. Now, if you try to follow me, I'll try to lead you into life. I'm a candidate for walking into life and bypassing death. Somebody said, are you preaching never die? No, I'm just preaching living forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I've never been a never die preacher. I've been a live forever preacher. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a difference. 
I, I wouldn't dare stand here and tell you uh, that if things continue for 200 years, I'll still be coming to Lake Hamilton uh, and preaching the kingdom of God for you. But I'll tell you uh, that I'll come uh, as long as I can, and when I can no longer come, uh, this tabernacle here may be laying over there on that old clay hill with my forefathers, but, but this tabernacle is what you see is just what I live in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, this, this is me to you, but I just live in this house. It's been a pretty good house. Yeah. It's generally healthy, strong, uh, and, uh, and handsome. <laughs> and and I kind of like the old house. <laughs> it, it's you know I've, I've noticed some wear and tear. Um, shingles are still intact, but uh, but one of these days, uh, if things go as they are now, I'll lay down this tabernacle. But that don't mean I'm dead, because I've tasted of life. The Bible said that if that happens to me, this tabernacle will go back to the dust from whence it come, and the Spirit will go back to God who gave it. That's me. And the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. What am I going to do? Well, if the time element's right, I may walk right into life. You, gotta, you can't get around the time element. In the fullness of time, Paul said, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, made under the law, that He might condemn sin in the flesh. God let Him come just right. God timed it so beautiful. Oh, I wish I could show you how God did that and how far back He started to do it and how precise He was in making sure that Jesus came down through the lineage just right to come under the law. Jesus' whole ministry was preached under the law. Uh, hallelujah. Well, he, uh, uh, God does everything just right, doesn't He? And uh, yeah, But I think, you know, God won't disturb that timetable. You know why He won't disturb the timetable? He's already set His king in His holy hill of Zion, and it's, alre it's already stamped with His signet. And the time is already established. And God, somebody said, there ain't nothing God can't do. Yeah, it is too. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things that God can't do. Uh, and the reason he can't do it is because he chooses not to do it, and because that he is God. God cannot lie because he is truth and the source of truth, and anything he said, no matter how untrue it may seem to you or to me, it is the truth if God says it. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. So God uh, can't, he, he can't do that. He, he, can't, he can't lie. And... Um, and uh, neither is he the Son of Man that he should repent. So it's already, a, if ever there was a time that God, if God could have changed his timetable, I know when he would have done it. You remember this guy called Job? And God just bragged on him ferociously, didn't he? This was just bold about Job. He said, Man, have you considered, he, he, he approached Satan with him, didn't he? And said, hey, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? How he's upright and filled with integrity and, and uh, won't have a thing to do with evil. And you know what Satan said? He said, as a matter of fact, I, I've had him under consideration. Huh. <laughs> uh, well, what have you concluded? I have concluded that you, you I know for a fact that you've got him hedged in. You've got a protecting hedge around him. And if you would let me m cut that hedge down, he he'll curse you to your face. And God said, 
all right, go ahead and take it down. So they took down the hedge, and, uh, and, and Job still maintained his integrity, didn't he? And they met again. And God said, he brought up the subject again, said, what about Job? Oh, he said, ah, he's got more integrity than I thought he had, but, but you know, I just touched his protecting wall there. What, he, you've made him the richest man in the East. Why don't you let me touch some of that? I get into his stocks and bonds, <laughs> his camels and, and, and cattle and sheep and lambs, and, and, and let me touch that, and he'll curse you to face. Well, he takes all of his wealth goes, doesn't it? And his wealth was such a, such a diversified um, um, uh, variety that he couldn't go broke. You couldn't break Job. His wealth is too diversified. His sister Cook said, no safe place to put. You know, that's the truth. There's no safe place. Nothing's. If, you, if you've got wealth, it ain't really safe nowhere. Sometimes it might be better just not have it and you don't have to worry about it. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be willing to worry about a little of it, though. And <laughs> well, uh, so then his family, but he had a great family, seven sons it was, and, and three daughters, and they, they all went. And everything is taken now. And then he said, well, let me touch you. All a man has he'll give for his life. Now, the devil's telling truths. See, he told the truth that time. He said, all a man has, he'll give for his life. And uh, that's the truth. But he said, now if, uh, uh, let me touch his person. So he touched him. And old Job, he comes down with boils, sores. Uh, uh, he's got everything. Everything's wrong with him. And his boils uh, mature and burst. And... Um, and and here he's, and his wife says to him, You miserable, wretch of a man, why don't you just curse God and die? And he said, Well, woman, you talk like one of them foolish women from the heathen tribes over there. He said, God giveth, and, the God, uh, and God taketh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And uh, it was on that day that Job sat on that ash heap. Here he sits in an ash heap. Boils all over him, sackcloth, he can't stand nothing, hardly touching his body. He spick, picks up broken pieces of pottery and scratches his putrefied sores. He can't get any relief. And he cries out, Oh, that there was a daysman that could touch me and, and him at the same time, could touch us both. But there was no daysman. Heaven was silent. But I declare that if God would alter his timetable, he would have altered it that day for Job. But years later, hundreds of years later, there was a baby that cried out in a stable in Bethlehem, and a daysman had come, one that could touch me and could touch God. In him dwelt all the Godhead bodily. In Him we live and move and have our being. Oh, let this surprise you if it will, but it is equally true that in us He lives and He moves and He has His being. Oh, praise the Lord. And one of them thrills me about as much as the other. Hallelujah. He's mo in Him God had invested it all. The Word had become flesh and dwelled among men. And we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He would become the head of a many-membered body. He would become the head of a church. He would become uh, the firstborn uh, whom it would please the Father uh, to bring many sons to glory like unto the first one. This is my hope. This is my hope. Ah, hallelujah. And when God begins uh, to raise up these deliverers uh, and to bring forth the judges, there's a lot of work to be done here yet. A lot of it. Somebody said, well, it's about over. Oh, it ain't near over. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, it's not near over. Uh, I have an idea. Uh, it depends on what we're talking about when we say it, but, but it ain't never going to be over. Hallelujah. Of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. Yeah, we're going to clean up the, the, this, this world. We're going to remove all this pollution uh, during the kingdom age. We're going to move some of it uh, before the kingdom age uh, is ushered in. Somebody has to live a life of holiness, for without no man shall see God. It has to happen to somebody. Yeah. Now let me read some Scripture. Uh, in the 51st verse, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That is, we shall not all die. But we shall all be changed. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And oh, what a message this would be in itself. Every reference is another lesson, another study. But, all right, in a moment, when are we going to be changed? How long? In a moment. In a moment? What's a moment? Sixty seconds. No? In the twinkling of an eye. Bible, some Bible scholars have told me this is the, the furthest, the, the, the most, the biggest, the, the least breakdown, I guess it would be, uh, of time. It is the smallest time that can be measured with a calculator or whatever. Uh, somebody has said it's that time between when the light changes from red to green and the horn blows behind you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's immediately, isn't it? All right, now, now, the last trump is the seventh trumpet. Would you agree to that? Without me having to do some more research. If you, if you want me to, if you would demand me to, I, I, I'll just prove it right down verbatim. But trust me and take my word for, <laughs> for some, because uh, I ain't got time to give you all this scripture. But I will give you Revelations 10 and 7. <laughs> all right? But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. What was the mystery? We just read about the mystery. The mystery was that we ain't going to all die. Now, when the seventh trumpet sounds here, I shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished. That makes me know that something has happened here. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Hallelujah. The sons of God have been manifested the 144,000 has walked into life, and they are the first fruits. You know the 144,000 in the 14th chapter of Revelation. Don't, don't take too much for granted. 144,000. These are those that come to the... Well, we better turn over there and read it, because we don't want to... All right. I looked, 14th chapter, verse 1, And behold, uh, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion with an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, As the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great trumpet thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the poor beast and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women. Now, all right. Now, there's 144,000. Somebody said, well, is this a literal number? I believe it to be a literal number because it will say uh, further uh, that these are the first fruits. So I believe it is a literal 144,000, but it is only the first fruit. And the first fruit guarantees a bountiful harvest. But we read on here, uh, they, they are, these are they that were not defiled with women. A woman is ever a type of the church. These are those that have not been defiled with all the church systems. 
They've not been indoctrinated by all of the systems. They are virgins, says so, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They are pure virgins. They've not been defiled with all the church systems and, uh, and learned all the doctrine that they'd have to unlearn. And, uh, uh, but they have followed the Lamb. We talked about the cloud last night. They followed the Lamb wherever he went. Yeah, you follow him. I tell you, if we, if we follow public opinion, we will miss God further than it is from earth to Mars. Now, I don't mean just part of the time, but I mean all the time. The carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh can't please God. But you are not in the flesh, if so be uh, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him uh, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit which dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we're debtors. Not to the flesh, because if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we have not received the spirit of bondage again under fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children, we're heirs to God and join heirs with Christ Jesus. If so be that we suffer with Him, we shall also be glorified together. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope. For the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, do groan within ourselves, awaiting the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. What man yet hopeth for that which he has? But if you hope for that which you have not, then do you with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to His purpose, for whom He did foreknow. He did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and whom He called, them He also justified, and whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who is he that can be against us? Or if he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, and is even now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? 
As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate. I came up through the old school that you dare not say predestinate. And if you're reading along here, you read fast when you get there. And don't pause for at least another three or four verses. Because they'll say, he's saying what is to be. Is he saying what is to be, will be? Oh, I'm saying that. Them he did foreknow, he did also predestinate. See, I never had no problem with predestination. Even in the old school, I'd have a problem with it because I understand it. When you understand these things, they're no longer problems. I've had no problem with the Godhead. Yeah, we came up through the old argument between the two denominations. Is there one or three? <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you've been baptized Trinity? Yeah, well, I've been baptized Trinity. One, yeah. The head foremost and backwards, and I was up in the Pennsylvania and, and run in some dunkers. <laughs> and uh, and the pastor said, "You've been dunked, Brother Harrison." I said, "No." Uh, so how you baptized? I said, "I said head foremost, backwards, in Jesus' name, name Father, Son, and Holy Ghost." Uh, 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 but you've never been dunked. And I said, no, but would you like to dunk me? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I figured it didn't make me any holier or, or any honorier. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, oh, Jesus said, you search the Scriptures, for in them you think that you have eternal life, and these are they that speak of me. But, he said, you will not come to me. You have to, you have to dig just a little beneath the surface and come to him in the Scriptures. The Scriptures bring you to him. Hallelujah. Well, see, what I know about predestination, why doesn't it offend me? Because I know that it is in the foreknowledge of God. And there ain't nobody here that don't believe that God knows everything. Anybody here believes God doesn't know everything? <laughs> well, you see, you believe in predestination. You <laughs> that that may make you a rascal with your <laughs> with your denomination. But in the foreknowledge of God, and you know the Bible said He speaks of things that are not as though they were. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. we got a great big God. You see, I said, I started saying that I sometimes am carnal minded. You ever get carnal minded, Rod? Yeah. Well, did you know this? That it's dangerous to be carnal minded because when you are in the carnal mind, you have access to everything that the carnal mind can imagine. Everything that it can propagate, promote, you have access to all of it. Now, if someone doesn't believe that, then don't tell me that when you are in the Spirit that you have access on, by the same token, when you are in the carnal mind, you have access to everything that's in the carnal realm. And though you won't do everything in that carnal realm, you are subject to it. The creature was made subject to vanity. You just pass in that tree again. Adam was subject to vanity, and there the tree of vanity was there, and he passed it and looked at it, but he went on by until Eve messed it up for him. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. He was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but it was I reason of him who subjected the same in hope. In hope, in hope that he... See, Adam was perfect. He, oh, he was really a perfect guy, wasn't he? 
but he was perfect because of innocence. See, our perfection is not because of innocence. It is because of overcoming. Whatever amount of perfection we have, we did it through overcoming and by the grace of God. And God didn't want a bunch of grown men that were, were pure just because they were innocent, never been, never been exposed. He wanted a group of overcomers. God had it like He wanted it. He had a man in the earth after His own image that had dominion over all of His works. Now, that's what He had in Adam. You know it says that. Now, I tell you this, that what God will do at the end of this age, He will have again a man in the earth. Only this time it's not just one man, Adam, but it is the corporate body of the last Adam, the sons of God. And uh, they will be in the image of the Father, and they will have dominion over the works of His hands. And if you believe that, you are a candidate for walking into life. <laughs> and if you don't believe it, well, yeah, well, lay it on the shelf and, and look at it once in a while. Search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. These are they that speak of me, but you will not come to me. All right? All right, now, we read there where he, uh, where, where did we read to, uh, to about the, uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the trunk. And we read about the 144,000, didn't we? That's right. Um, all right, then let's, all right, then let's go back to the 11th chapter of Revelation and verse 15. Now, the seventh trumpet has begun to sound. The mystery of God is finished. And I tell you, let me tell you what all I think took place here. I think that the sons of God have been manifested. This, the mystery was that we wouldn't all die, but we'd all be changed. I think they have been changed while yet alive. I also think that the first resurrection has taken place or is taken place. And the dead in Christ will rise first. But now when he says the dead in Christ, well, let me give you that scripture. Uh, what's First Thessalonians chapter 4, I begin with verse 13. You'll read with me. And I, brethren, wouldn't have you ignorant uh, concerning them that are fallen asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not precede them that are fallen asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of angel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we that are alive and remain uh, under the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore he said, comfort one another with these words. All right? Now, uh, who are these that God is bringing back with him? We're waiting to wit the redemption of our bodies. Well, I tell you now, without fear of ever having to be eternally corrected, that if time does waste out on us, and I do go by the way of the grave, and they do plant me over there with my forefathers, ah, that when he comes back, I'll come with him. And when I get so close to that old clay hill over there, like a, uh, like a magnet, I'll claim the redemption of this body, and then immediately it will be changed like un from this vile body like unto his glorious body, and I will reign with him forever and forever and forever. But make no mistake, the in Christ it is not all the Christians. The Christ in you is the hope of glory, but the hope that it is, uh, the hope, the glory that it is the hope of is that Christ will engulf your whole being. John the Baptist said, I must decrease, but he must increase. And, uh, and, and the first resurrection, only the in Christ did comes out. Now I'll tell you just as plain as I know how who the in Christ did are. Uh, and I'll just use myself for an example. If I should go by the way of the grave tonight... 
and there is nothing between me and God that would keep me from being translated alive should the time element be tonight, then I am in Christed. But if there is something that would keep me from being translated into life tonight, uh, should that incident take place, then I am not in Christed. You know what happens to me then? Somebody said, he'll go to... No, no, I just won't rise again for a thousand years. I'll rise again after the millennial reign, and then I'll be judged according to the books. Plural. And I open five books at that judgment. <laughs> That's, uh, they're all scriptural. All right? But, but, but if I... You see, after the first resurrection, there's no mention of judgment connected with the first resurrection. You know what has happened? We've been judged prior to the first resurrection. Judged worthy to go into it, to be part of it. We don't need any further judgment. But God is raising up now. Now I have to get on here. Uh, in the, did I read the verse I was going to read? Uh, in the 11th chapter, in the, t uh, what is it, the 15th verse? Uh, and the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Who is this? Who is the Lord? Everybody knows who the Lord is. Jesus. But who is this Christ? Oh, that's us. The Lord, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. His anointed body. Hallelujah. I tell you that God has launched Hallelujah. Uh, I remember when I was, I forget how old I was, which is there, and Pearl Harbor was bombed in what, 41? Was it 41? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was 15 years old, 14. Uh, well, I stood by the radio and listened to that. And, oh, I couldn't imagine Pearl Harbor and couldn't imagine anything across that great big old ocean. I'd just seen the ocean once or twice down in Galveston. And I, I thought, boy, what a sight. And here I am, what, 14, half years old? And, and I'd like to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, I guess I was 15 years old, because I went. I didn't go over there, but I went the other way when I was 16. But yeah, we went. Uh, I heard President... Uh, Roosevelt, remember his speech? Fellow Americans, he says, Congress has declared that the United States is in a state of war against Japan. Early this morning, the Imperial Japanese Air Force bombed Pearl Harbor. This day shall go down in history as a great day of infamy. We have declared war and we will be meeting the Japanese on the land, we'll fight them on the land, we'll fight them on the seas, we'll fight them in the air. I tell you, fellow Americans, we will not cease to fight until the Imperial Japanese Army is no longer able to wage war. We will receive and accept nothing short of unconditional surrender. Oh, it took all the curl out of my hair. Uh, I felt real patriotic. Ah, I've got to get there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> got to see this. Ah, and I love to hear the, the pre you know, that was, wasn't much television, hardly any television then. Uh, was, uh, uh, but, but I love to hear the president talk about it. Then every year he'd give a State of the Union. Uh, first. Well, and he'd say the end is not yet in sight. But, but the last... State of the Union address he gave before the war was over, he said, the end is in sight. We had them. <laughs> it was just a matter of getting all the documentation. Then I like that picture of old of, uh, Harahito. Her yeah. Then uh, Douglas MacArthur. Douglas MacArthur standing in this big old auditorium room, looks about big as this auditorium. Ain't nothing in it but a table without even a scarf on it. With some books and, and, and a flag behind the general. And here comes the general of the Japanese army to sign the surrender documents. 
He looks old and haggard and drawn. And and Douglas MacArthur looks like the hero, the great conqueror, which he was indeed, great warrior, standing tall and straight while this bent, old, beaten warrior signs unconditional surrender. We don't have any... Do us any way you want to. We don't have any say. I tell you, that's... We we will meet the odds. The big horn made war against the saints. Yeah. But I tell you this, that the spiritual congress of the universe has declared a state of warfare against him. We'll meet him on the ground and in the air and on the seas, but we won't cease to make war until he can no longer wage war. And then the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and we shall reign with him forever and ever. Now, now for a few minutes, and I'm not going to be uh, lengthy, I went to one... One preacher asked me to come, and I don't go for a lot of advertisements, you know. I just preach and teach and prophesy and whatever the Lord lets me do. And I don't never do no advertising. I don't never knock on nobody's door. I don't ever even, I don't even invite anybody to come to the church. You know, I'll invite you to come by and see us, but I mean, I don't get out in the community and invite anybody. I figure, you know what I figure? I figure the Lord will send me all He wants me to have. And they'll give me enough trouble without me going up. <laughs> but, and, but now, don't you go back and try to do everything I'm telling you. I do. <laughs> Somebody will jump on you and whoop you. But, <laughs> but they won't do me that way, see. I, that's the way I do it. I just preach, teach. They know, anybody says, you want to run it? Oh, I said, no, goodness, been here 35 years. They know I'm here. And, uh, you know, if they come, many have come and been blessed. Uh, and like I say, I feel like the Lord, if he wants them to come, he's going to send them in. He knows where they are. He didn't nobody come lead me in. I just got hungry and went to the trough. <laughs> now, so God brings us in. And as he brings us in, let me show you now what God does when he gets ready to bring forth this deliverer. I wanted to show you that we were going to be judges. Did you know? Did you know that Paul said to the Corinth church, he said, Don't you know? They were having some kind of little disputes, and they, they were having a hard time making decisions. And he said, Goodness, don't you know you're going to judge angels? And I, and I wondered for a long time what that meant. But, but before we go to Exodus... Exodus, I'll show you what it means in Jude, uh, chapter 6, I mean verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, and then in uh, 1 Peter, no, it's 2 Peter, I guess it is, chapter 2 and verse 4, it's practically the same, it, it is the same statement. The word is just a little different. But it is the same statement. Well, then we know about the fallen angels, didn't we? All right, what has happened here? It has pleased God uh, that these angels must be judged by human, by the human race that has been transformed into godliness. And, uh, and they have been in the, being held in prison. They are reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, what, what they're being held for is until a company of, of judges can come upon the earth that can judge their case. They're like a man that has committed or allegedly committed a crime, and he is being held in jail without bond until his trial. These angels, they sinned against God. They were caught and and captivated, put in prison, and they have been held without bond, awaiting the day that they will be come before the judge. But so far, there has not been a company of judges that can make this judgment. The reason I can't make it, you know the reason I can't make it? 
Same reason you can't make it. The reason I can't make this judgment now is because I judge too much by the seeing of the eye and the hearing of the ear. But there comes a time before God is through with us uh, that we no longer will judge by the seeing of the eye or the hearing of the ear, but with righteous judgment we shall judge. And when that day comes, these angels will come on trial, and the sons of God uh, will judge them and pronounce their fate. But God has to raise up these judges. Now, now having said that, I'll show you how He raises them up. In the next, if you give me about 30 more minutes, <laughs> and then I'll take 30, <laughs> and uh, and that'd be getting late. If brother said, if anybody has these out about 1:30, well, don't feel bad about it. We <laughs> we don't know that you felt like you had to. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. God's good, isn't He? Oh, yeah. Isn't He wonderful? Yes. I tell you, saith the Lord, the deep uh, is calling the deep tonight. Yea, I've opened up the spirit of revelation. I've enlightened your eyes and your seeing. Yea, I tell you uh, that you are being taught, and the teacher has not taught until the student has learned. Yea, but you shall surely go away enlightened. Yea, and you'll be strengthened by the power of his might. You won't leave here like you come, because deep has called unto deep. Yea, and you will realize some for the first time that I am called of God. Yea, and the Almighty has His hand upon me. Yea, and thou shalt know of an assurance. Yea, that you've heard voices. You've heard uh, the voice of God. Yea, yea, for what would you come to see? A reed that is bent with ever trade wind? Ah, a prophet dressed in fine raiment and silk? Nay, I say that you've come to hear a prophet, uh, that the only wind that can bend this prophet uh, is the wind of the Holy Ghost. Yea, the only motivation is the motivation of the love of God. Yea, for dispensation of truth uh, is laid upon the prophet. Yea, and he shall share many great truths with you. Ye shall grow by leaps and bounds. Yea, ye shall grow uh, like a fatted calf in a stall, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, and I shall bring you to Zion and say, This is my people. Yea, I have brought them to Zion. I took them uh, one of a city and two of a family. Yea, and I brought them to Zion and give them pastors and teachers uh, that are after my heart, saith the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, Exodus chapter 2. All right, God's about to raise up a deliverer and a judge. He's one man, but he's going to be a deliverer and a judge. His name is going to be Moses. And, he, and when Moses gives the orders to the children of Israel to catch the lamb and put the blood over the door, you remember this incident? Uh, and the death angel was going to come through at midnight. Well, when they acted in obedience, it assured two principles, absolutely assured two principles. When the Israelites acted in obedience to the Word of Moses, which was the Word of God, it guaranteed two principles. Israel would get deliverance, and Egypt would get judgment. And it was all wrought. Is that the Scripture on it? He'll judge He'll deliver Israel and judge Egypt that kept them in captivity, and Moses is a man. Now, let me show you here. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. You know this story, so uh, spare me the reading. I'll tell you the story briefly. But, but let me give you the, what we're noticing here. A man went, a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. You see anything? We're going after a thoroughbred here. <laughs> Amen. This man of Levi is going to take a daughter of Levi. He is not going to take a daughter of any other tribe or a daughter that doesn't belong to any of the tribes. He is going to take a daughter of Levi. 
God is going to raise up a thoroughbred. Now, let me say here that uh, that I'm not preaching blood lineage. Uh, is I'm moving it over and hear me in the spirit. Will you hear me in the spirit? Don't hear me in the flesh. This was a flesh thing, but it was also a spirit thing. But God is raising up some thoroughbreds in the spirit. Doesn't have anything to do with our real blood lineage, if, whether we can trace our lineage back to whoever we can trace it back to. Doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with what God's doing to us. So God's going to raise up a thoroughbred. Somebody said, well, I'd like to have a full blood horse. Well, what kind of full blood horse would you like to have? You don't want a full blood horse, probably. Anybody that wants a full blood horse, unless he... I don't know what you'd want with him, for, unless you'd want him to, uh, for uh, reproduction purposes. Uh, all full blood animals have defects, weaknesses. What you meant was you want a thoroughbred horse. <laughs> and there's a difference between a thoroughbred and a full blood. You know how you get, you know how you get a quarter horse. How you get, yeah. My granddaddy, well, my my granddaddy's all the way back. We're ho we're cattle breeders, horse horse breeders and raisers. My my granddaddy said, if uh, when I had a, um, my granddaddy gave me a little horse when I was oh just ten years old maybe, and he was uh, oh he was beautiful. He was like uh, uh, had a solid white face. Glass eyes, you know glass eyes, what's called glass eyes, it's clear eyes. And uh, he had uh, four stocking feet from up to his knees. And he had a white uh, a belly, under his belly was white. And the rest of him was jet black. And I said to my granddaddy, well, I'd like to have a whole crowd full of these. Well, he said, son, it'd take a long time. He said, it'd take a... Uh, Sixteen generations, and I can do it for you. It only takes fourteen generations, but he's figuring two generations, the space of two generations to get the horse old enough to begin the reproduction. But he says, in fourteen generations, I can breed any color out or any color in. So if you're wanting to, to, if you're wanting to get your horse that's like race horses, you know, they breed them for. Maybe they breed. Uh, they get one breed is extra strong, and another breed is extra fast. The strong breed is slow, but the other one is extra fast. You cross them too. Get the strength of the stout horse here, and the speed of the fast one, and and blend that together, and then reblend both of them until you get well, about all the speed you think the horse can can afford, and he still maintains a good sturdy body. If you breed him too far out, he'll go back to a, maybe to a frail, uh, stringy body uh, for speed. All right, so, uh, but God was looking for a, a thoroughbred here. What he's looking for is a man that won't crumble under pressure. Ah, so he sends a man of Levi to get a daughter of Levi to produce a deliverer that won't bend, a deliverer that is dependable, one that will have all the traits of stability, one that will not turn back in the day of battle. He's, he's, bringing, he's bringing this deliverer for us. Now, that's what God's doing with us. He's raising up deliverers for us, and He's placing the attributes in us that He wants in us to make us stand, to make us, to give us stability. He brings us through divine order. He talks about his government. He says to order it and to establish it in judgment. That's the procedure, uh, Isaiah 6, verse 9, 10, long in there, uh, to order it. Now, here's, you can't never get here unless you come this way. You have to, it has to be ordered to get established. If you can't stand no order, you can't stand any establishment. I don't care how many uh, charismatic bunny hops you can do. You, if you can't, if you can't be ordered, you can't get established. And if you can't, 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you know, the charismatic... It bothered me tremendously being from the old school when them charismatics started talking about being filled with the Spirit. And, and it didn't change nothing but the statement. <laughs> and, and the old school that I come up to, when you got it, you didn't get it, it got you. And it changed your life. But here they are, just going on about their business and <laughs> doing the same thing they always done, and just so spiritual that they were having um, uh, just finicky talks with the Father. And every time He ever spoke to me, He puts me on the spot and makes me nervous. But they just buddy-buddy with Him. <laughs> but I'm not... But... but uh, and you do know that they, there's never been any establishment? The Lord settled the question for me, though, and He said, Well, the difference is y'all got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they just got filled with it. And Samson got filled with it. And he picked up gates and walked off with done a lot of things when the Holy Ghost would move on him. And he was filled with it. But, but, but in your case, it came to abide. If it comes to abide, it'll change your character. If it just moves on you, it'll make you jump high. Hallelujah. Amen. But you'll hit the ground the same way uh, that you, just like you was before you went up. It has to get in you. Uh, where was I? So I started meddling. He sent a man to take a bride uh, to produce a... Uh, hallelujah. You know, and they, they, I was listening to tape the other day, and this guy's got uh, somebody coming over to teach him to dance. And the, uh, you know, and then, and then he invited the public, giving them about three weeks to learn it, and come and we'll do it for you. We just didn't have to give them no advance notice, just come and we'd do it for you. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, well, I don't know. I can't relate to that. Maybe it's all right in the realm that it's in, but it doesn't belong to the realm that I'm talking about. No, I appreciate, I, I'm not, I, I will concede that the charismatic movement was birthed of God, now all of the movements, and that they did something uh, to promote the move of God. But I'm just saying uh, that they, 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 they just didn't come far enough, did they? And well, we hadn't come far enough either. Uh, all right, so Moses, then he, he comes there, and, uh, and you know the story, he looks pretty good, so they hold him out, and they're putting the baby's death, finally put him in a basket, put him in the river, Pharaoh's daughter fishes him out, has him uh, raised in the palace, and he becomes the, I, I, I think that he becomes the crown prince of, of Egypt. Crown Prince is the next one in line for the king. And, um, but, but the, the mother, the foster mother, the adopted mother, sends him to his biological mother, but she doesn't know it, to raise him for her, to keep him. For this is going to be a great deliverer. Now, he's got, God's got to be careful with this man. You're working carefully. See, he, uh, Oh my goodness! You can't you can't get here through. Somebody said it won't be. Brother said about the revival. Didn't think it'd be through any one denomination or any combination of denominations. It'll be through uh, the body of Christ, I guess, and just whatever God does. But I don't think again. You know, I don't believe again that God will leave it to uh, uh, you know all of the one man thing, because. If we have demonstrated anything at all, we've demonstrated we can't stand that kind of glory. The human race can't. And all of them, without fail, has, has, has come falling down. And, uh, and the rest of them, you just can't stand that. I was, I was telling a fellow, you know, sometimes I've, when I, I've seen somebody dead, I, I preach a lot of humans over 700, <laughs> and I have times of just practice raising them from the dead. You know, like, command you to rise in Jesus' name. Now, so far, uh, my batting average is zero. <laughs> but you can't tell when that'll change. 
Now, <laughs> uh, but I, I was this elder. He knew about it, and he says, "Brother Jackson, man, just think what would have happened down here in town if you if you had a raised up." Man, said this town would have been on its ear, wouldn't it? And that scared me because I he made me think, and I said, "You know what I was thinking was what scares me is." And what I was thinking is what would happen to old Jack Harris <laughs> if, he'd, if he'd have got up. You, you know what would have happened to Jack Harris? And if he go, would have blowed him away. Yeah. Blowed him away. Couldn't stand that kind of glory. Oh, they would have heaped all kinds of praise on me, my goodness, and, and, and I'd have just got more impolated until I just blowed up. Yeah, I see the wisdom in God not doing that. He didn't want to just blow me away. Hallelujah. Yeah, but the day comes when He has built enough stuff into us. The day comes when we will, you know. All right, so He's... He goes to this house. Oh, how far have you come? Yeah, this man. All right, so Moses is going to be tutored by two women, two different cultures. He's going to be taught the ways of Jehovah by his biological mother. He's going to be taught uh, the ways of the gods of Egypt by his adopted mother. So God's going to have to, after he gets all of that teaching, God's going to have to get him 40 years over in the desert to unteach him. And uh, so that he will be good for God's use. So he, uh, the next thing that uh, happens to him then, well, you know his, the story how he gets over with his father-in-law there. So I've got to cut some corners here because I'm going to quit pretty soon. Uh, but he, uh, and he gets over there with his father-in-law. And the next thing that has to happen to him, he has to have, before he can be a deliverer, he has to have a double weaning. Who else had a double weaning? Well, let me give you a scripture here, because you may not know about a double weaning. In the 28th chapter of Isaiah, and the, the uh, ninth verse, I guess it'll be, yeah. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. That's a double weight. That's a double weaning. Now, if you, uh, you can't come into this that I'm talking about until you've had a double weaning. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you got to have a double weaning before you can be this deliverer. Now, you can, with just one weaning, or maybe without any weaning, we can do deliverance like we do now. But I'm talking about delivering a nation. I'm talking about delivering a race. I'm talking about deliverance. And you can't do this until you have a double weaning. You know, when the, uh, when the, uh, in my generation, babies were raised on the breast, the mother, you know. Or the, uh, I understand a lot of doctors recommend that again now, but for a long time they've just been almost strictly bottle-fed. But in our generation, they nursed them at breast, but when the, that's kind of confined into the, to the mother, so after the child gets so many weeks old or months old or whatever, she gets him a bottle, and you know, with a, a nipple on it, and, and, uh, and then when she can't breastfeed him, she sticks the bottle in his mouth. So when she gets ready to wean him, she weans him from the breast, but she puts a bottle in his mouth. So that child has to be weaned twice. That's a double weaning. All right. Now Moses, he was taught by two women, so he's got to have a double weaning. He's got to be weaned from the breast. What's he weaned from? From the breast, from the milk, and drawn from the breast. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. The first weaning, hold your hat. The first weaning is when you, when you come out. <laughs> when you follow the cloud, when you get weaned from the mother hen that hatched you. <laughs> yeah, I told you I was come out of the come-outers. 
<laughs> and I ain't too good to come out again if anybody wants to bow down. Yeah. Now, now, when you come out uh, from under the hen that hatched you, the mother hen, that's, and you get lean. That's a weaning. You get that? All right. But, but you came, a lot of people came out but, and they got the first weaning, but the mother hen kept, kept mailing their litter to her. <laughs> you go to your mailbox and it's full of litter to her. That's the bottle. They, you just weaned off the breast, but you still own the bottle. I know people that come out of the well-known denomination. Uh, it came out 40 years ago. And the only difference in them and those that stayed in the denomination is that they just don't answer to Springfield anymore. <laughs> uh, they still, they wean from the denominational hen, but they're still getting the literature quarterly. They haven't had a double weaning. Now, when they get a double weaning, and and forget about that literature that's mailed quarterly or monthly, uh, and leave yourself open uh, to the Holy Ghost to teach what is prevalent for this hour, then they'll have a devil weaning. And when you get the devil weaning, you're ready to confront the burning bush. Now, he confronted the burning bush, and you know, he got kind of careless over that for 40 years, Brother Rod. If everything goes good, you'll get too careless. You know, every time, you know, sometimes in life you can get everything just fixed pretty good. Yeah, everybody's, uh, you know, family's doing good. Everybody's making a living. Nobody's in financial straight. Uh, ain't no divorces on the docket. Uh, you, you know, and everything's just going good. And you think, boy. I think I'll take a vacation. Yeah. Everything's going real good. And about that time, yeah, from out of nowhere, here it come. Hits you broad faced. You know what that is? That's God saying to you, this ain't your rest. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your rest is not here. No, it's somewhere else. It's God. God's always, every once in a while, He has to remind me, this ain't your rest. <laughs> and shakes me up a little, you know. And there remaineth therefore a rest for the children of God, but if you try to find it here by manipulation, by genius, and by the works of man, you'll find that this is not your rest. Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses, then he confronts the burning bush, gets the commission to go, and he is actually on the way. He bid the father-in-law goodbye, loaded his uh, wife up, or I don't know, they may be walking, and his two sons, and they're uh, leaving uh, Midian uh, to go to Egypt uh, to give this great deliverance. Everything's fine. Moses at last has found his rest. But about the time they go around the big old clump of rock, God met him. You saw right there in Exodus, you know the passage, I don't have to read it to you. The Bible said God met him and would have killed him. You familiar with this? Yeah. What was he going to kill him for? He, he hadn't circumcised his sons. It was God's way of simply saying, all right, boy. Yeah, yeah I've raised you up a great deliverer and everything. And I'm going to bestow great power on you. Now, the glory that I'm going to reveal to you uh, is going to be tremendous. But I'll tell you one thing. It's not going to happen until you bring up some loose ends. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I fear that, that when God moves on us to make us know that, that God is moving on us, there's going to be some loose ends that we're going to have to take care of. People have grown careless. And, and because of, of the ease, they have acted as if they found their rest. And God's going to demand some loose ends be brought up. There has been, well, I don't like to talk about abuse toward the ministry because I don't feel that I've 
been abused, uh, really, very little. The uh, ministry's been very good to me. And I've tried to give the ministry a good shake, and it's been real good to me, but, but I, I know ministry that has been abused badly. And the church has abused ministry, and, uh, and, and I tell you, before we can move into this deliverance ministry that I'm talking about, there's going to have to be some loose ends brought up. Moses don't, these boys don't get circumcised, Moses ain't going to Egypt. He's not going to be a deliverer. He's going to have to do this, and his wife did it for him, and uh, that was all right. Then he could move on to his ministry of deliverance. I tell you now, saith the Lord, yea, that it is a time to be very careful. It is a time to walk barefooted before God. Yea, it is a time to search the Scriptures and, and find the way of life. Yea, it is a time that thou shalt hear the teachers that God will send your way. Yea, uh, and you will feel spiritual growth has come and is coming to you. For God, the God of this universe, will move in your very heart and in your being. Yea, you will find yourself uh, moving more readily, more easily toward obedience to God. I tell you now that you will begin to develop Yea, a subconscious fear of missing God, uh, lest you be obedient to Him. I'm bringing obedience to the body of Christ, saith the Lord. Yea, I'll make you so anxious uh, to be obedient to me uh, that you can't even visualize it in your uh, most far-out dream at this moment, saith the Lord, though God. This is the end of part A. Please play Part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. The Friday evening service of May the 25th, 1990, the Memorial Weekend Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park. Jack Harris is the uh, speaker of the evening. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. Uh, that you can't even visualize it in your uh, most far-out dream at this moment, says the Lord, though God. I'm going to be intimate with you. I tell you that I will, says the Lord, though God. Yea, if you will follow me uh, in this regeneration, I tell you, you will follow closely. But if you would follow afar off, yea, it will be your choice. But the Lord does not choose that you should do it this way. The Lord uh, wants to embrace you, to draw you tightly into his breast, as it were, uh, and to nurse uh, the, uh, with uh, efficient, sufficient uh, nursing, yea, that you might grow to a statue of understanding, yea, whereby that you can be taught uh, the oracles of God uh, in the sincere truth of God. You shall know the whole truth. Don't you know, saith the Lord, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free? Yea, seek out the truth. Let this word sink deeply into your heart and into your spirit. You shall live, saith the Lord. Hey, say, Linda, would you get closer up here? I have a word for you. You can hear me back there, but I, I want to lay hands on you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. He's clothed with majesty. He's clothed with strength, whereof he girdeth himself. 
The earth is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne, O Lord, is established of old. The floods have lifted up. The floods have lifted up their voices. The floods have lifted up their waves. But the Lord God on high is mightier than the voices of many waters. Oh, thy testimonies are very sure, and holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Ah, yes, indeed, the Lord says, I will indeed raise up deliverers that shall be judges and restore uh, the judges, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, for there remaineth much to be done uh, in the earth in this dispensation, yea, and then shall the end come. Know that the gospel of the kingdom of God must be preached in all nations as a witness unto me, and then the end of the age will come, uh, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, know uh, that uh, much work remaineth to be done at home, yea, uh, and, and, and righteousness uh, and holiness begins at the house of God. Yea, the, I tell you, my people, you would do well to watch your uh, normal, natural relationships. And I'm talking about family relationships, neighbor relationships, uh, and fellowship relations. You would do well indeed to watch and walk carefully, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. There is a book back on the table there that is entitled The Barefoot Ministry that I gave some years back. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you relate to this ministry tonight, you'd relate to that book well, uh, and it would be very enlightening to you. I, I heartily recommend it, although uh, it may be unbecoming of me. I'll do it anyhow. And uh, there is another one that I am especially proud of called The First Fruits. It is very enlightening, and, and, and now that I'm started, on to deliverance is a very enlightening one. And again, it may be very unbecoming of me, but I'll do it anyhow. I will say that many people have told me about all three of those books. Not one person, all three of them, but one at a time. But hey, this is the best book that I ever read. I learned more from it. Uh, I got it. Uh, I preached them under... Uh, uh, a great anointing, and uh, and they were recorded and then uh, edited, uh, and the anointing comes through, you know, like it does on the tape. Uh, it's great. Uh, the tape or the book is just the next best thing to be in present, isn't it? Praise the Lord, our God reigns. Glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me give me your hand here. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, indeed. I thank the Lord. I'm just getting the um, the, the feel of, uh, uh, yes, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Yea, the Lord would say unto thee, my daughter, ye know that I have anointed thee with a fresh anointing, yea, a new anointing. Yea, and I have brought thee from afar, yea, to here, saith the Lord. Yea, and I shall settle thee uh, in this place, saith the Lord. Yea, and it is a good move. I would have you worry it no longer. Don't question any longer. Yea, but just determine that you are going to flow. In this place I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm going to make you a blessing to uh, the staff here at Lake Hamilton, and I'm going to make them a blessing to you. You shall indeed go out and return. Yea, you shall go out with gladness. Yea, and you shall teach the ways to Zion. Yea, you shall make melody on the instrument and sing the song of the Lord. And the Lord thou God, I shall give unto thee a new song, and another new song, and another, and another. And you shall never run out of new songs and a new fresh anointing. Yea, it is the inner uh, being that I am after, my daughter. And I shall claim thee both spirit, soul, and body. 
and you shall know that you are touched by the Lord. Yea, I shall, uh, I shall give you a, a measure of happiness and a measure of rest and a measure of contentment, and you no longer will be, uh, as it were, in a guessing game. Yea, but thou shalt know uh, that the hand of the Lord uh, is on thee. Yea, and I, I shall give thee favor with this people, yea, a special favor, yea, uh, uh, that I shall give thee. Yea, and thou shalt be instructed and helped. Yea, for thou will not come to a day, uh, saith the Lord, uh, that there will not be one uh, that you can approach, yea, and be instructed and be lifted up, yea, uh, and lifted out of your trouble, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, uh, do what your hand finds to do with all diligence. Yea, it is not a day of withdrawing or slowing back, but it is a day of perseverance, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, a day to press in. I tell you now, I have not brought you here to fall or fail, but I have brought thee here to bless and be blessed, uh, saith the Lord thou God. You will not go down... Uh, 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 under, but you will go over, uh, for the anointing of the Lord shall continue to be on thee, saith the Lord. Yea, and you will sing as you haven't sang before, uh, saith the Lord. Yea, you will teach as you have not taught before, for enlargement comes. Even now, enlargement is coming. Yea, uh, your oh, uh, I see a capacity uh, for, re uh, for retaining, for receiving, and then retaining, yea, and then giving, uh, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, uh, growth shall come, and ye shall be exceedingly glad uh, that you have heard the voice of God. For my daughter, yea, from Time, uh, times of old, you heard voices that others didn't hear. Uh, you felt urges that others didn't feel. Deep called unto deep in the early hours of your, uh, the early days of your life. Yeah, you didn't know what was happening, but it was a depth of the Spirit of God coming from the throne to reach deep into your spirit, yea, that he might pattern you uh, in his own likeness, saith the Lord. Yea, you will not miss God, for if you will to do his will, you will know uh, the truth and the word, whether it be of God or not, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Lord. Wonderful, wonderful Lord. Oh, ha-ha. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Rod. My Lord and our God. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the Lord would say to thee, my son, I've seen your obedience. And I know the love that motivates you, yeah. I know the loneliness of your heart. Uh, uh, in, in some of your travels. Yea, I, I remind you of the cows that was hooked to the ark and went down the road toward Bethmash, lowing as they went. Yea, and sometimes you, my son, will go, but you'll be lowing as you go. They were crying for the baby calves back uh, in the pen. Yea, I knew the uh, everything that is a rod uh, would be crying for the easy chair and uh, the the affection of the wife at the home, uh, but but separation uh, because of the ministry, just parting. You understand not separation but disagreement. Uh, yea, for the Lord has given you a good helpmate, saith the Lord. Yea, uh, and one that whose heart is is mixed into it as yours is. You are a team indeed, saith the Lord, thou God. I tell you now, my son, uh, that I have anointed you with a fresh anointing. I'm enlarging your teaching capacity, and I'm opening doors. And when I open doors, there is nobody that can close them. If I close one, uh, there is nobody that can effectively open it. I've got my hand on you 
you, my son, I'm going to direct you. I'm going to guide you. I tell you now that I guide you by two principles, Lord. I guide you unconditionally. Ah, yeah, you will have to know, my son, uh, that I have directed you unconditionally. When you knew me not, when you paid me uh, no uh, preeminence, I, I divinely guided you unconditionally. But I'm guiding you by condition now, my son. Yea, for you're a grown-up boy. You're one of my big boys, and, and I'm going to deal with you conditionally. Yea, and that condition, as you know, will be according to your obedience. Yea, listen intently and conscientiously for the word of the Lord. Yeah, thou knoweth the word of the Lord. Thou knoweth the voice of God. Yea, and the voice of a stranger you won't follow. I tell you now uh, that you will get to try out this word in the very near future because you will hear the voices of strangers that will sound very much like the voice of the shepherd. And you will have to use a strong sense of discernment uh, to know the difference. But you will make the right choice, my son. And then after you've made the right choice, the voices will become clear and distinct. And you will know of an assurance yea, uh, that I am drawing in to thee. Oh, God, that's the cry of your heart as I see it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm going to invoke the choicest blessings from heaven for you. Hallelujah. Lord, I just let you choose them, but make them the choicest blessings from heaven for Lord. Lord, I'm going to bind the spirit of... Uh, I'm go oh, I'm going to lose finances to you. Is it all right if I lose finances to you? Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to loose finances to you, Rod. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I release finances to you, to your family. Uh, in Jesus' name, my Lord and the Lord God. Yea, but the Lord speaketh, but... But many are dull of hearing, but I'm going to sharpen the hearing. And I'm, I've already aimed uh, some finances in your direction, saith the Lord. And, and uh, the Lord says He's already aimed in your direction, and I'm loosening them. Uh, say, uh, say with me, we're loosening these finances. Say it. Hey, point your hand this way toward Rod here. Hallelujah. Amen. A man, oh, praise the Lord, uh, and then can trust, but a man that will carry the gospel and can teach it like this man can, and with the good spirit that he does, he should never be hampered by finances. Hallelujah. That's the way I feel about it. I'm telling God, that's the, that's the way I feel about it, Lord. I feel that way about it, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't feel any correction. I think I'm right. Hallelujah. I believe that I speak by permission. Hallelujah. 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 Glenn, praise the Lord. Oh, mercy of mercy, my Lord and our God. Ah, oh, yes, the hand of the Lord is on you, my son. Yea, I shall cause the healing virtue of Jesus to flow through you. Yeah, I'm going to cause you to mend faster than what would be normal. Yeah, and I'm going to restore that, that um, I'm going to restore everything that has leaked out. Yeah, I'm going to restore it and I'm going to add to it. Yeah, I'll add a, a scrumptious amount uh, to that that I restore. Yea, for I have chosen thee, thou hast been a faithful servant of the Lord. Yea, I have uh, given thee stewardship, thou hast been faithful over a few things and over a lot of things. Yea, uh, and thou art my faithful servant, and I can deal with you, my son, uh, in ways that I do not deal uh, with some of the other sons of God, saith the Lord. Yea, uh, for thou art tender of heart, yea, and thou dost reach out 
uh, to people, yea, and those people are my people, saith the Lord thou God. So it is my heart uh, reaching out to you, yea, uh, and and I shall continue to do it, and and you shall continue to grow more compassionate with the ye- uh, with the days, uh, and as age uh, comes upon you, you shall be more compassionate than ever, yea, and ministry shall increase, yea, and you shall have no lack, yea, and never will there be a time uh, that you will not have a people uh, that will embrace you, yea, uh, and uh, and commend your your tenderheartedness and your goodness toward God, for ye shall be loved and admired by many, and it will be the blessings of God upon you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now, just a few minutes here. Sister Mildred, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, thank the Lord. Ah, the Lord has aimed and directed goodwill towards you because of your spirit, yea, because of the hungering in your heart. I tell you, my daughter, uh, some may think that a lot of years have crept up on you, and you know that is true, but, but youth continues to cling to you. Uh, in spite of the birthdays, the calendar, you contend, uh, you, you continue to be youthful, and you think, uh, younger than you are, uh, and you reach out to God with a real hungering, and, oh, I see a, I see a tremendous hungering in your heart. I don't remember, let me say, uh, the first time I ever seen you, Sister Mildred, was, if I am remembering correctly, and believe me, this goes back some years, uh, maybe 35, 40 years ago, I met you down at Jasper, Texas. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you look nearly like you do now. She said, I, and I've seen her uh, off and on from then to now. And, and I never have seen this lady when she doesn't have a good report. And uh, hunger for God. If God's in it, she wants it. Hallelujah. And she, yeah, if, there's, if there's a chance that God's in it, she'll take that chance. Hallelujah. And this is good, my daughter. I tell you, you're blessed above many that would be your equal, yea, many that would be superior to you. I accept that you have the anointing. You heard them voices. Hallelujah. You've had that urge. Deep has called unto deep. Yea, and you are in the presence of God, yea, with your spirit, and you know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are to be commended, I say this by permission, that you are to be commended for your faithfulness toward God. Yeah. You no, know, this lady will get in the car and just drive from across Texas by herself. Hallelujah. God's her co-pilot. Hallelujah. Her trust is in the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Doc. Thank the Lord. Ah, I'm going to invoke choice blessings from heaven for you, because in my opinion, you deserve them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not doing you any favor, because I feel like you really deserve them. Hallelujah. And if I can invoke them for you, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the authority uh, and invoke choice blessings from heaven for you, Doc. My Lord and our God, and just let the Lord of glory pour them out on it. I tell you now, my son, uh, that I see your consistency, yeah, and I hear your testimony to many. I tell you, you've been a light uh, in a dark land, yeah, and you've been a ray of life uh, to many, uh, yeah, and a blessing uh, to many. I tell you, the hour cometh that everybody that you come in contact with will be blessed. Because of that contact, saith the Lord. Yea, uh, for you are my son, and I am your father. I'm not ashamed of the relationship, uh, and I see that you are not either, saith the Lord. Yea, you shall be greatly blessed, and you shall be enlarged, and knowledge shall increase. Yea, for I have given you a, a, a deep measure of knowledge uh, concerning my kingdom, and concerning
concerning deliverance and concerning uh, the ways of God. Yea, I have given uh, you much knowledge. Yea, you have received it not only with your intellect, which is uh, a tremendous, but you received it into your spirit, which is more tremendous. Deep has called unto deep, and you are a marvel among men, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. Well, hallelujah. 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 hand here. Ah, yes. The blessings of the Lord be on the Moody's. My Lord and our God. Oh, my Lord. I tell you, I tell you myself that you have taught me many things. Yeah, you've taught me a lot of things that I didn't know. And the Spirit bore witness that you were telling me the truth. And, and I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the realm of the Spirit that you flow in and the ministry that God has given you. It is a very needful ministry, and God will bless you, continue to bless you greatly. God already has blessed you greatly. You ask for an increase in finances, and... and and you get it. You, oh, what, well, ask whatsoever you will, he says. And you dare to believe God, and God dares to answer your prayers. Yea, you are a light to many, a help to many. You're reaching out, and that's good. Yea, because uh, it is compassion that the Lord of glory has placed into your heart and spirit. And he has given you the knowledge Yea, and then you have persevered toward it. Uh, yours is not an easy person's job that I have called. Your calling's not, not a lazy person's calling. I tell you, it'll take diligence, but I know you, and because I know you, I know how you will direct your home, your life, and your business, yea, and my business, saith the Lord. And I'm going to bless you with a tremendous uh, continuous blessing, and ye shall continue uh, to minister before me in the presence of my people for a time to come, yea, and many shall have their eyes enlightened. For don't you know that unless it pleases God to open the eyes of the blind, they never will be opened, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I could minister to everybody, but I, I know that you don't want me to, and, and the time is creeping up, so I'm getting some of the leaders here. Yeah, well, and nobody has actually vocaled it until now, <laughs> but I'm sensitive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My brother and my sister. My, let me say to you uh, for myself that I have enjoyed your ministry. I appreciate your spirit and and uh, your your good outlook, your exuberance. Oh, I especially like your exuberance. Hallelujah! That is a correct word, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank the Lord. I just fun in a little bit. You know, the Lord don't care. I'm I'm just kind of feeling out the Lord here while I get better acquainted with this great couple that the Lord has brought uh, our way. Yeah, for the Lord says, Indeed, it is I that has brought you this way. It was not by chance that you have appeared at this gathering. Yea, uh, not actually it wasn't just because that Glenn thought of you or you thought of Glenn or whatever. It's because uh, that the Lord tells you how to think. If any man thinketh he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing as he ought, because if he thinks he knows it, he knows it with the intellect, and he ought to know it with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Yea, and you, my son and my daughter, know many things by the Spirit. 
Yea, when you get it by the Spirit, you can kick it around, because you know that it is God. Yea, for thou hast learned uh, to listen and hear the voice of God. Yea, and with thy, thy exuberance, uh, thou hast made uh, many people happy that would have been sad otherwise. And as people get happy, they open up. Yea, and they can be taught the oracles of God then. But if they uh, remain with the sad countenance uh, and close off their mind, they no longer receive from God. Yea, I have given you a unique uh, way, so to speak, of uh, presenting uh, this great truth. Uh, and uh, these uh, great uh, experiences uh, that you relate that always makes a point. This is good, my son. My daughter, uh, I have given you the, the skill and ability to sing, yea, and to make music. I tell you now that I'm going to give you a new song in the night. I'm going to give you, I'm talking to both of you, I'm going to give you a new song uh, in the night. And you will sing, uh, you will call this song, the song of the Lord. That'll be the title to it, and it'll be a song that the Lord has given to you. I tell you uh, that there is much uh, there remaineth much to be done, my son. I've given you favor with a lot of people. Yea, and thou hast been up and down the land for a long time. Yea, thou hast experienced the good and, the, uh, and some of the bad. But you know, my son, that the good far outweighs the bad. And that's what I like about you, my son, my daughter. I know that you won't turn back, yea. I know that in a time of crisis there will no weakness show up. Yea, for you are true uh, sons of God. Yea, and I have laid my hand on you and anointed you for this day and for this hour and the hours beyond. Everything else uh, is past. It already is past. It has been good, and it'll be good to remember and reminisce. But I tell you, I am anointing you afresh and anew uh, for this hour and for this day. For I have spoken, and who is he that can gain, say, one word of it, saith the Lord. You have received the word uh, uh, from God. Believe that you received the word from God, and not from Jack Harris, but from God. And it shall surely come to pass, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the wonderful name of God. Hallelujah. Oh, the wilderness and solitary places shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to them. And the excellency of Carmel and of Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, our God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. Our God will come and save us. Then shall the blind eyes be opened, and the deep ears unstopped. The lame man shall leap his heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. And in the wilderness shall waters break forth, and springs in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. And in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there in the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sickness shall flee away. Hallelujah. Oh, if God be for us, who is he that can be against us? Hallelujah. Uh, what difference does it make who is against us? Hallelujah. Paul said, My departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I'm ready to be offered. 
time you get this letter, Timothy, the word will have gone out that I've been executed. Don't you believe a word of it, boy. <laughs> they didn't execute me. It was an offering. God just poured out an offering. Hallelujah. Oh, we you sing a chorus. Would you be, you know that one, Linda? Would you be poured out upon? Let's, yeah, let's sing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I am being poured out an offering. I'm serious. I'm being poured out an offering. And if I'm not being poured out an offering, somebody please tell me what I'm doing so I can get oriented and get headed in the right direction. I am being poured out an offering. Three years ago, or how long ago was it? Three, four years ago, you remember? I drove myself into the ground, just pouring myself out to ministry, traveling miles, miles, hundreds, thousands of miles, always fighting a deadline. Had to be there at a certain time and back here at a certain time and drove me in the ground. I didn't know what in the world was wrong with me. Never that had been sick a day in my life and I got sick all over. Couldn't I was so sick I couldn't tell the doctor how I felt. And I was so sick my sick was sick. And and it took it took me and all the doctors in East Texas Six months to figure out what was wrong with me. And I was the first one that figured it out. Well, the doc said, really, uh, uh, Reverend, you wasn't the first one who figured it out. But I figured it out about three months ago, but big guys like you don't like to be told that. <laughs> I, I said, Doc, the only thing I can figure is I just drove myself into the ground and about to have a collapse. He said, yeah, Reverend, I figured that out about three months ago, but said, like I said, he said, big fellows like you don't like for doctors tell them that. <laughs> so I'm just a little guy. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know, but I thank the Lord. As soon as I knew what it was, I got over it. If I hadn't have found out what it was, I'd have been over this tabernacle have been <laughs> over there on that hill. Yeah, I've been with the Lord. But it's better for you if... Uh, don't get with the Lord so quick, huh? I got a lot of truths to tell you. Oh, I got a lot I could share with you. <laughs> ah, go ahead, Linda, let's sing this. You'll, you'll enjoy this. Let's stand together and listen to the truth of this. Will you be poured out like wine upon the altar? For me, will you be broken? Glad to be the hungry.
Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blessings. And we thank you now, Father, for a good night's rest. And thank you for raising us again tomorrow to hear thy word and to hide it in our hearts that we sin not against thee and to praise and to worship and to glorify Jesus our Lord. We thank you for the word that we've heard today. We thank you for the word that we shall hear tomorrow. We thank you for that which we shall hide in our hearts and carry. We shall be a, a, a testimony of the power of the living God in our lives that men shall know that Jesus lives because he lives and reigns in the hearts and lives of these people. Pray your blessings upon all here tonight, upon those who, who had planned to come and who, were, for some reason or another, were not able to. We bless them as well. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love is flowing like a river. Love here tonight, and I don't want us to miss it by singing, and I want us to wait in His presence and worship the Lord, and let's just release some, the gifts of the Spirit within our, in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus, we do that, Lord. We call forth the ministry in Your people. We call forth the gift of prophecy. We call forth the Word of the Lord in the hearts of Your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. For behold, I am coming. I am coming again, and when I come, you shall see me come with my mighty angels. I am coming for people that have been separated unto me, for I said, Be ye holy as I am holy. I am coming for a holy and a righteous people who have been separated from the world, who have been separated unto me, and who will bow down and worship and serve me and do my will. I am coming for that people who will, who will do my will, who will stand before me and will go forth and will judge according 
according to my word will judge and will with a rod of iron I am coming for that people and behold I am coming for that people that might walk into life with me and go forth and do my will saith the Lord He shall be holy unto me, for I Mr. Cook, I saw you come in tonight. Would you come and sing a song for us? Little by little, day by day, little by little, in every way, my Jesus is changing. Since I looked into his face, I am saved by his amazing grace. 
my Jesus is changing me. He's changing me. My blessed Savior, I'm not the same old person that I used to be. I've got a knowing that someday, like him, I will be. Little by little, day by day, little by little, in every way, my Jesus is changing me. Since I look. Into his face, I am saved by his amazing grace, my Jesus. He's changing me. He's changing me. My blessed Savior, I'm not the same old person that I used to be. And though it's I've got a knowing that someday, like him, I will be. I've been worshiping him. I've been praising him. I've been in communion. I've been worshiping him. I've been praising him. I've been I am his, and he is mine, and I draw from this string every day, every hour, Jesus is mine. Oh, I've been worshiping him, and I've been praising him, I've been in communion. I've been worshiping him and I've been praising him. Oh, I've been in communion. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.